guys. <laughs> What's up, bro? Good to see you. How are you? Doing yourself? Very good. Chilling. It's good. This way. I was telling Chris before we even hopped on or were outside was this is full circle. Almost going on two years, it was the first time we stepped in foot into San Diego's podcast. And we actually came to podcast with my brother himself, mm -hmm. Mr. Chris in the house, baby, let's go. But I mean it's also like you already know how well, we do like, you know, before we get into this whole go. this whole podcast. I will say one, one thing about this though, is that I think that God has gifted me with something that sees the potential in people. Mm -hmm. And I've been his biggest fan since day one, right? Yeah. I texted you and yeah. told you, I love how Pepe's stepping up. He's fucking saying his shit. He's saying his truth because he has something to say. And he's mm -hmm. saying it with like power and like experience. And even second Genesis over there, after she just followed me on Instagram. <laughs> they call like, me, that's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, hey. Man, wait, hold you, on. you guys powerful. are gonna hate me, fool, but I didn't even hit record. <laughs> Oh, oh shit, really? I didn't even hear me. Hey, that was dope though. We fucking hey, we're going, bro. Hey, we're going. Oh, it's a vibe. It's a vibe. <laughs> hey, that's that's the intro right there. <laughs> Man, it's also like podcast, baby. Most of oh, it's also it's also a live podcast. podcast. Right, here, let's go. <laughs> Man, take two, let's hit. take two, take two. But I think once once we get into this whole conversation, <laughs> once we get into the whole conversation. At the same time, it's like, yo, forget about everything, everything else, the externals, the little details. Uh, we had this conversation earlier at breakfast where, yeah, we're social media influencers in this to an extent, mm -hmm. but we're more of a like, bro, this moment that we have here, you can't replicate it. Luckily for us, we figured out a way where all you got to do is put a camera in front of us and we get to have memories of it. And now we get to extend this conversation to whoever is willing to listen and ready to listen and empower them. Again, I gave you, uh, if you guys don't know this, two years ago, <laughs> let's redo this intro, <laughs> but almost about two years ago, we took that leap of faith to come to San Diego to record with, I'm still such a big fan of his, but at that moment, I was fangirling because I used to go to fitness expos to go see this guy, to take pictures of him, to try to have at least two minutes of conversation with him because I love his videos, his energy, his work ethic. To two years later, one of my best friends, one of the guys that mentors my life and has, and I've said it many times to the people who ask me and they ask me, oh, how, what, what made you change or what helped you? Well, Chris saved my life mm -hmm. by simply having a conversation and having a podcast to that weekend. Pepe was present to that mm -hmm. where everything happened. We came during Christmas and I told you, and I said this many times. You saved my life without you even trying and without you even knowing that simply by you being there, checking in on me, talking to me and telling me some of the words that I needed to hear saved my life. And I don't know what my life would have been if you weren't there. So for everybody listening, if you have that person that saved your life without even knowing it, without them even knowing it, here's your time to tell them thank you. Because mm -hmm. without that special person in your life, whether it's your significant other your brother, your sister, your friend, your mother, your dad, whoever it is, got to give thanks to them because without them, who knows what life would have been, you know? And I always give thanks to my guy Pepe here too because, shit, we've been through hell and back. And not and not in this journey here because I think in this podcast journey that we've been doing has given us an opportunity to just be ourselves. But, man, we know we've gone through hell and back on our own. And I know my team here... Um, We've fought individual battles without ever telling anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when we just come together, it's like, man, thank you for just being you. That's it. Because of you, I'm here. Mm -hmm. And without you, I don't know what would have transpired or what would have been. So right. I'm sitting down next to two of my, my big bros yeah. that, again, it's just relationships that flourish yeah, through yeah. the power of conversation. Right. We have our conversations. Yeah. We have more than our conversations. We talk every day. And when we get on the phone, we get on conversations for like 30, 40 minutes of, hey, how are you doing? Yeah. Hey, are you okay? Hey, why haven't you checked in in the last 24 hours? Like, are you mad at me? What I do? <laughs> like, damn, we're a little babe. toxic sometimes. Yeah, but babe, hey, babe, babe, are you good? You know, yeah. not Genesis is here with us on this San Diego trip too, but she's one of those that tells us, 
Don't talk to me for the next 48 hours. I'll talk to you guys later. Yeah, you need that too. <laughs> you, that, you need that, that transparency too. for real. You, yeah. No, most definitely, man. And again, it's just we talked about this in the hallway where finding a group of friends or a friend that genuinely wants you to win and doesn't ask for anything in return is so hard to find. Mm-hmm. Someone that was willing to put you forward and give you that confidence to win without them even getting anything in return is so hard to find. Mm-hmm. So when you have it, you have to protect it. Yeah. And you got to do everything in your power to protect it. So, yeah, man, you got me going, Chris. You know, it, you honestly, do? can oh, I, damn. that, um, you say that, man. And, um, I just remember a part of my life that, that you had such a big part of me seeing value in who I was as a person. So I see myself being saved by what you've done for me. So like, when you tell me those things, you know, I always, you know, reflect back to you. And I'm always like, dude, you fucking mean the world to me. You're fr- like, not even kidding, bro. Your friendship to me means more than anything else. Like that I've actually, I can actually really express in feelings, like in the words that I'm saying, because I think that I'm, I was blessed in a way that I don't, I don't ever see myself above anybody else. And that makes me open to relationships that impact me the most in my life. And in those moments that I saw you as an equal, even though you saw me, you know, in that light, yeah. I saw this, I saw a guy that was hungry, yeah. that wanted to fucking build something. I saw me in you, not sexually, but like <laughs> as... <laughs> <laughs> but if you but want to the, you know, and this bottle is, you know, <laughs> but in those moments man i fucking saw you and i was like this guy's fucking hungry he's hit me up like five fucking times he's about his shit and and i think that's what made me make that leap of faith because i, I saw a lot of my inspiration and in what i do in you and i wanted to i wanted to share my love in that moment but in that moment I felt lost, bro. I told you. I've told you this a hundred times. Yeah. I felt lost in those moments because I was coming off that big success that I had with Shrink Cartel. And, like, I didn't know what my next move was. And um, I've always spoken on camera, but I didn't know what I wanted to say. Mm-hmm. And that day you sat me down and we talked, yeah. I realized I had a voice in something else that wasn't fitness. Yeah. And then when I started saying those words, I saw people resonated with it because I had a story yeah. that people could relate to. And we kept creating greatness, right? right? After that, then Gino, mm-hmm. Mondo that podcast that mm-hmm. was energy in that room was just crazy right mm-hmm. and then we sat down with also jose your social media guy here yeah. in san diego yeah put two of my my big bros together where it's like you know it's just i know everybody can relate where when you have a group of friends that just get it and mm-hmm. understand and understand their assignments and understand their roles in their own lives the sky's the limit mm-hmm. where Everybody here, we we know what our job is. Yeah. We know what our job is outside of this. And then when we come together, we know what part we play in, what role we right. play in. Mm-hmm. And it's, again, it's sometimes I feel like if you have to tell someone what you need from them and you keep telling them, yet they don't want to listen, those are the type of people you got to let go. Yeah. Because they're just doing it because they want something in return. Yeah. When everybody here and everybody that we have around in our life well, we don't need to tell them what we need in return. They automatically just do it because it comes out of their heart. Yeah. Goodness of their heart. The same thing with Bet Bet, bro. Like, if somebody in this world gives more than he ever receives in, in life, it's my guy. Yeah. He's one I of those that. that has just one of the purest hearts in the world. Where it's just like, when you have that around you, mm-hmm. if you value it, you have everything in the world. Mm-hmm. But if you don't value someone that has the purest heart, the purest intentions, and the greatest heart, well, then you're always going to be searching of, why can't I find that? Why yeah. can't I? Well, you had it, but you didn't know how to fucking take care of it. Yeah. So now what? Yeah. And there's a struggle there, right? Like, we always thought, like, again, we all go through. We went through a good amount of, I think, of our of our time of our life where we were just like, you know, I got to let go of this person, let go of this person. Man, that friendship or that relationship doesn't fit me. Okay, why is it? Why mm-hmm. am I there? Why am I sitting there? Why am I keep going? Why did I go back? And this is like, am I here for the right reasons? Right. Are they here for the right reasons? Yeah. Well, I think, honestly, it's about really finding the alignment in terms of vibration. I look at everything like a vibration. Mm. Like, when it's not an accident, you stepped up, right? You started seeing yourself better in that light, and then that position opened up, and you stepped into that shit because that vibration was aligned with him. You aligned with me, and that's why you reached out to me, and that's why I felt compelled to come out and do that shit. I think that we're all vibrating at the same frequency right now, and I think that not enough people talk about that shit. Because if because when, when when I started bettering myself, people that I loved and the people that I thought that were gonna be there forever, they weren't aligned anymore vibrationally. Yeah. And now it felt awkward. Now it felt forced. Everything yeah. felt wrong. And then I knew it wasn't for me no more. Yeah. And that's why I hear like, you know, the, the really good people like um 
Kevin Gates, those kind of really successful people that really understand the frequency of what it takes to be super successful. Mm -hmm. And then being, having people around you that, you know, can ping off each other. And then we can kind of ping off each other and then kind of, uh, increase that vibration as it goes. And when those people that are there that are dropping that vibe vibration and frequency, you feel it. And then, so you have to let those people go because they will drag you down into a lower, lower frequency because it makes them feel better about where they're at. And so that's why that's what I as a maturing adult, you know, being over my 30s now and then like having two children and having businesses, whatever. I'm starting to realize that if you were aligned at one time with somebody, that's cool. But know that that alignment will alter sometimes and you have to be mature enough to understand that that's not aligned anymore. And you have to let that go because or else you'll never get to the next step. It won't evolve to the next person that you're supposed to be. And that's OK if they want us, you know, hang out in that certain frequency or even drop off. That's cool. That's your life, but it doesn't have to be ours. And that's why you have, that's me. Like they tell you, if you hang out with five millionaires, I'll show you the sixth one, right? Or if, if I hang out with five losers, we're going to show you the sixth one, right? And that's, that's, I think it's the simplest way of talking about frequency and vibration. But I think that that scientifically, just because I'm a science guy, you know, the kinesiology stuff, that makes more sense to me. Because I know there's tangible frequencies. And if I can spend my days every single day meditating, reading, doing cold plunges, doing like cold exposure stuff, raising yeah. my vibration, then I know I have to attract the better yeah. people, right? So, Pepe, a question to you, because how I just mentioned, you have one of the purest hearts in the world, one of the most kindest hearts in the world, where you give more than you receive. How do you distinguish that now in your stage of life where you've given so much to other people and you haven't gotten even half of it back or even a glimpse of it back? How do you maneuver through life now? I think I've been used to it for so long that I give, 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 and don't really get that at this point, it's just, uh, I don't really expect anything anymore. Um, I'm just, like you said, I just do good naturally. It's, I don't expect anything back. You know, is there a base that you have now? Like, is there a foundation that you created on your own that kind of lets you function at this frequency? Because everything get right. If you function at a certain frequency for yeah. such a long time, you get tired, you get burnt out and we all have been through it. So, because you function at that frequency, what is your foundation? How do you stay in control of, of yourself, of life? Just surrounding myself with good people at the end of the day. I think that's what helped a lot. Uh, surrounding myself around all you guys pretty much saved me for, I mean, I've told you countless times, right? Yeah. Uh, you, you've saved me. You saved me. And what's crazy, it's uh, I didn't know he saved you. I didn't know Chris saved you. So thank you for saving him because <laughs> honestly, if you hadn't saved him, I probably wouldn't be here. So thank you for yeah. saving him. You know, I think that's, um, I think, I don't think a lot of, I don't think a lot of people don't know that story actually yeah. of how that I don't know that about. story. Yeah. Uh, really fast. Um, I'm trying to like, trying to minimize it to a minute clip, right? Cause you got to make Just it a minute. viral. Make, uh, <laughs> a minute clip. <laughs> but after we did that first initial podcast, I mean, again, I was a big fan of you and Gino, um, and the fitness industry that you guys at the part of at that time. And when we were able to have that podcast at the compound yeah. with Gino, Mondo, you, we came in such a, in such a vibe where life was burning. Yeah. Our whole life was burning down. This is in the midst of depression, a midst of suicidal thoughts in the midst of everybody turning their back on me. Mm -hmm. Everybody that I thought loved me and thought that was going to take care of me and have my back left mm -hmm. so i was left with nothing but no one knew that because i had to showcase that now i'm happy mm -hmm. now i'm living i'll be mm -hmm. out here we're traveling and we came to, into that podcast and i didn't again we never know how this is gonna flow yeah we have an idea and we always come up with an idea now right and it's just kind of like boom out the window yeah the conversation that i went through to where when we took our 30 minute brace where I was able to express something that was biting me so much of what I'm sacrificing in order to sit in this chair now. Yeah. And I let everything out and it was such a healing process. Cause again, we came back from that trip and I, I remember it Monday morning, Rocco, Vincent Rocco message yeah, yeah, of yeah. how we were the best fit podcast for him. And he wanted to sit down with us. Amazing, big fan of the Mayans and mm -hmm. that show. And then I think it was like a whole month later, Again, started to sit down with my own thoughts. We had about an hour conversation mm -hmm. after talking with Rocco. And then we came to uh, Mike Barron's uh, Christmas party. And we're all there. We're all having fun. And I made sure before we left, 
I'll tell you once again that you don't know this, but you saved my life without trying. And as a grown man, as dudes that are sitting at six foot tall, like you saved my life and you don't know it. And I want to thank you. And I tell you, I love you because without you, I don't know what this month of November would have looked like, Mm -hmm. what this month would have looked like. And because of you, I'm forever in your debt. And I've always told you I'm forever in your debt. Why? Because how I don't know. I can't tell someone, oh, if this would have happened, this would not. Mm. Probably the worst would have happened because I didn't have no outlet. There was no yeah. outlet. Nobody. Nobody could have saved me. You, without intentionally, you just, you said the words that you said. You be creative. You created a safe space for me to speak. And I was like, all right, cool. So my work, my life is worth living for. It's amazing. So now when, when I meet someone and how are you doing? Man, I'm living life, bro. Mm-hmm. How are you? I'm, I'm good. Shout out to Genesis because we, she sent me a video just, uh, when we're recording this, this is a day prior. So this is a 19, um, there's, and we talked about this outside. There's a base. Mm-hmm. All the people that are happy in this world, that are, are successful, that are flourishing in their lane, there's a base. What is that base? For me right now, it's God. Mm-hmm. Like, no matter how good, how bad life may be, you, you, you're in control of it. I'm just your vessel. If you want me to go through this, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. I all understand. Mm-hmm. But I got to see the lesson now. Yeah. Now it's different. Now it's not like, why me? Why did you put this in my face? Why did you put this in my life? Why are you putting me through this struggle that I don't want to be in, that I know I can't do it? And then once you come out of that storm, you're like, man, it's okay. So what changed your mindset? What was that turning point where you said, you know what? It's why me, God? Why me? And you said, you know what? Let me accept it. Everything's happening for a reason. I got out of my victim mindset. Okay. I was so, in the, I was in the victim mindset of mm-hmm. man, you know what? Man, you guys are all for against me. Everybody's against me. Oh, this man, life is unfair. Nah, man, life is great. Yeah. Life, life is changes great. life changes when you say why not me opposed to why me. And that's real. And then so when I in those moments, so I know two specific moments with me and you. And I, I don't wanna I don't wanna take nothing from my guy Mondo, right? And we'll talk about this because I feel bad. I feel bad like saying that. But in the moment of us being in that podcast, I was possessed by something, bro. I don't even know what the fuck it was, bro. But I was like, I was so, you've seen the video. It's been gone viral many times. Holy spirit, my bro, boy. I was possessed by something. I was, I was talking to you like, did you ever fucking give on yourself, darling? Did you ever fucking do that shit? I was talking to you. Yeah, yeah. The cameras fucked up and they went to Mondo and, and just so happened that Mondo was crying. Yeah. Right. But I was talking to you. And I was, but honestly, I was speaking life into all my boys, but specifically there's something about you in that moment that I was like, I know that he needs that part of me right now. And I was willing to give a little piece of my heart to you that day. And then when we were at the Mike Barron stuff, I gave another little piece of my heart. There's only been a few times in my life that I felt like I've taken a piece of myself and I put it in somebody else. And it was Bruce one day when Bruce decided he wanted to kill himself. And I decided that one day I was going to gift him with something inside me. And then that was one day. And I think I might have told you about that. And then the other two times was you. And that was on the podcast when we did the compound. And then we were at Mike Barron's place. I remember grabbing you by your shoulder and you crying and then me speaking life into you. Right. And because I wanted to shift that mentality from why me to why not me. Yeah. And then I remember telling you and you kept saying, how am I going to repay you? How am I going to repay you? He's like, fucking repay me, dog. You fucking make sure that you give this back to somebody else. Yeah. You you pay it forward. And he has. Right. And you have time and time a million again. times and again, right? Yeah. I feel and it all the time. That's what it's about. It's right? crazy. Yeah. It's what it's about. You made him feel. Yeah. Why not? Me, right? And so those yeah. same feelings that I feel towards you, obviously I know I'm, I'm it, you're feeling more fulfilled now. And now I'm looking at Pepe and I'm like, I need to speak some life into this guy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so that when I texted you that day, I was like, I, want, I need you to tell Pepe. That he's doing it. He's fucking go. Like, speak life into him, bro. Like, because he's got it. I think it's just that, right? Like, when someone, when you know someone is great, but yet you want the world to see this, yeah. right? The power of that we have now is, yo, you can speak up whatever you want. Mm-hmm. And you have support. You know, I'm not going to look at you like, man, man, you're talking crazy. Yeah. Ah, oh, man, that's great. You're, so, well, you're, you did this for me. I need the world to see this. Because yeah. what you did to me, for, for me 
man, you could do it to somebody else that doesn't even know you. Mm -hmm. And when they reach out to you, how much you saved their life and how much they needed to hear that, it, that type of payment, you can never even put a price tag on right. it. Right? Like, um, hey, man, I just... Having someone that believes in you more than you believe in yourself mm -hmm. is priceless. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to find, and it's very hard to find someone with the purest intentions. But when you find it, keep it protected, save it from everything. Yeah, because that for it to come once again, you just never know. It's a holy grail. It's a holy. Oh it is. man, it, it it's difficult, right? Because again, everybody hand everybody goes through life in so many different shapes or forms. Some have it harder, some have it easier, some have it more like given, some have it like they got to work for it. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we're all living and breathing and, and we're, we all have blood in our veins. Mm -hmm. It's how you react to what everything that happens to you, mm -hmm. right? We live in two different cities. We live hours apart. Doesn't mean me and you don't walk the same shoes and, or bleed the same blood, mm -hmm. right? But it's just how we react to it. So when now when shit goes through, well, dude, how can we elevate from this? Mm -hmm. How can life get better in this new year that we're in? How can we succeed in what we're doing right now? You have a lot of shit going on right now mm -hmm. that is amazing, right? Mm -hmm. NIL, your your training, your mm -hmm. kids, your fatherhood, mm -hmm. you yourself. It's all right, cool. How can we elevate? What's the con what kind of conversations are you having? What's what's the depth right. of it? What's the foundation of that conversation? Is it pointless or does it have some depth to it that when you leave this room, cool, mm -hmm. I'm ready. Man, that should motivate it even, yeah. even more. Right? So it's just having conversations that have meanings. Mm -hmm. Having conversations that have depth. Having conversations that motivate you when you leave. Mm -hmm. In any shape, any way, shape, or form. Maybe you want to help yourself and be like me. Or maybe you hear this and you're like, fuck this. So I don't mm -hmm. want to be like that. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's like, again, just the friend, the friendships, the environment the decision making and who inspires you and, and motivates you. Mm -hmm. It's it, it it's always right. right. It's changing. Yeah. Depending on your mindset, depending yeah. on what you see life, it, it's gonna change. But um do you think that mindset that you have right now, fatherhood had a lot to do with it? Honestly, this is the reality of how I think about life right now, especially where I am maturity wise. Uh, I want a bunch of motherfuckers around me that been through something, mm. been through some shit, dude, because the more the shit that you've been through in trauma, the more capacity you have to deal with life and the happiness it can bring. Right. And right now I'm dealing with a lot of shit, a lot of moving components. And the only reason I can deal with that is because of the shit that I went through. And then that gave me the capacity to deal with life, how it should be. And which is I can, I can handle life and all its components because at a time life broke me down. And I had to build myself back up. And in that, my skin got resilient. I got stronger, just like my muscles lifting weights. My mind was able to evolve in a way. Yeah. So when I see people around me, put, put, put me around some motherfuckers that have been through something. Mm. That they, You've been through something? Put, put me around you. Put me around you because you've been through something. Yeah. Because I know you had the capacity to evolve to the other side of that, nice. which is the highest level. Yeah. So I want I want a bunch of motherfuckers that have, you know, I don't, I don't say that you, I don't, I don't, I don't like people that, I'm not going to glorify going to jail, doing that stuff, but incarceration, I've related a lot of those guys because the capacity of how much trauma that causes. Oh, man. And right? It's and so much, bro. Like, yeah. Man, I got and, one of my brothers taking taking a trip right now, too. And so when we talk, I mean, we, we got to talk. We mm -hmm. talk live. He's like, dude, I know I'm already getting closer to being out, but man, it's probably one of my worst times. I'm like, you're giving yourself the harder time. Like, you've been through the worst. Mm -hmm. You've been you've been broken. You everybody left you. No one believed in you. What worse can it get? Mm -hmm. You already had to restart. You lost everything. What now? Ah, uh, yeah, but no, don't do that to yourself. You've been through so much shit already. Do not give up. You're almost there. Yeah, keep going. Mm -hmm. You lost everything. What's the worst now? What is it? Well, what's the worst that can happen now? Right? If you lose everything, what's the worst that can happen? Yeah. You have to work to build it up again, right? Exactly. You already yeah. built it once. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't make it's not impossible. You yeah. prove to yourself you did it once. You yeah. can do it again. Yeah. So I mean, it's just like um, I mean, any, any entrepreneur and any successful uh person would say, like, it's okay. I could lose all this. I know how to redo oh, it. it. You have yeah. the building I know blocks. How to it. I mean, you have mm -hmm. the building blocks. You know yeah. what you're doing yeah. now. It's right? you have it. a I've been the I put the shield on already. Like I've already been through the worst. I've lost everything. I had nothing. Now I got a little something. Mm -hmm. But if you want to take it away, go ahead. 
<laughs> you're putting the same warrior back in that in that same battle. You think it's not gonna happen once again? Yeah. You counting me out, shit. It's okay. I counted myself in. Don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. I'm coming. And when I'm here, hey, don't complain. All right? Because now when people see you doing a little good, a little bit better, what happens? People start closing doors. Yeah. People are like, nah, you can't do better than me. Don't mm-hmm. do it. Mm-hmm. Nah, I don't want to help you. Don't it's like do they it. want you to do they want good, you to, just not, not better, better than that. Better than exactly. Them. So what are they going to do? Oh, yeah, right now I can help you because I know you're not going to get better than me. Oh, shit, you're flourishing? You know what? I'm sorry, bro. I can't help you. Yeah. I saw that. Cool. I've been helping myself. Yeah. I did it. Yeah. You know, talk your, like, I give, I'm trying to give encouragement to everybody. Talk your shit. Encourage yourself. You are that bad motherfucker. Yeah. That has been broken, that no one counted in, that everybody left you to be, to die for. Mm-hmm. Shit, count yourself in. So once you come back from the dead, everybody's like, oh, what the fuck? Yeah. yeah I made it back. What's up? Yeah. Now what? Yeah. And people don't like someone that's outspoken. Mm-hmm. Someone that doesn't care about other people's feelings in that sense. Mm-hmm. Or cares about judgment. They call you crazy. Oh, it's okay. I am crazy. And what? Mm-hmm. I'm everything you think I am. And then some. But I know who I am. So yeah. don't worry about it. Yeah. And that's what people don't like. They don't yeah. like someone that's confident. That's very determined and very motivated. Right. Because that's that's a danger to a lot of people. Yeah. To some it's an asset. And to some it's a liability. Mm-hmm. But... Shit, call me like you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I am recording. Yeah, you didn't forget this one. <sighs> you know what? That was a dope. And that was that a, that I know. <laughs> <laughs> Fired. 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 The I think the cameras have audio, and I just pulled it from there. Oh, there you oh go. can you? That'd be dope. All right, all right. Yeah. Problem solving. Authentic. Problem solving. Right. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. We can problem solve. Point five. Smooth. He yeah. can fuck <laughs> it up, but he can also <laughs> fix it. <laughs> nah, I already oh, told yeah. someone, bro. Like. I'm one of those people that if I don't know how to fix anything I, and I have the budget in my pocket, I'd rather pay someone to do it. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. It's, it's, it's easy. Outsource that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Where, what was the word that we said the other day, Jen? Um, we said it in the morning today. Outsource? Delegating. I'm delegating. Oh, oh delegating. Yeah. I'm delegating. All right, all right. Yeah. CEO I, shit. Gosh, I, you do that. CEO Yahweh. without being a CEO, yeah. but we're doing it. <laughs> but, man, go ahead. Let's do so, this. this is one thing that I've learned. Or one thing that I truly believe, because obviously this is my own realm and then people can believe whatever the fuck they want to, right? I believe that this is, we're just having a human experience and and our souls are trying to learn the lessons that we can take to the afterlife or the next life that we're living. And I think that the lessons that we're learning right now and the things that we're going through trauma-wise is building us like a fucking muscle. And so many people are so caught up in the mix, in the in the hamster wheel of what kind of car do you got? What's your body look like? What kind of booty cheeks you got? Whatever. What kind of muscles you got in your tank top? That you forget that you're here trying to learn lessons. And then when you move on, that's the only thing you're taking with you. Right? Yeah. And so when you get, when you go into that grave and they put you six feet down, that's the only thing that's staying there, right? They can put all the jewelry and shit in there. But when you move on, bro... It's the shit that you learned when you lost your kids or the things that you lost when you, when you when you lost your business, all those things, or someone hurt you that way. The lessons that you learned and you decided, do I get better or do I get worse? Do I heal or do I be unhealed? And that's the shit that determines what you do in the next lifetime or the next step after this life. So here's the, my question to you. How do you feel about people that gatekeep? About like lessons? Everything. Lessons. What they've learned mm-hmm. around, throughout the journey. I know there's like to an extent, but... We're those type of people. If you ask me, right, yeah. and I see the gen, like how genuine you are, and you really want to resonate to whatever we're saying, like it, I have, there's nothing, no, nothing more that fulfills my heart than to give you what helped right. me, mm-hmm. right? Because I hope it helps you. Because I know I'm gonna get that back tenfold somewhere somehow. Mm-hmm. That's maybe not right now. Maybe mm-hmm. not tangible, but some way somehow, right? So you that you're so so giving. And you give life lessons to a lot of people and helped out so many people, your athletes, your friends, people around you. Right. How do you feel about people that gatekeep and think, ah, you know what? I learned this. I'm not going to give it out. Right. So I look at that and I can only speak on my relationship with God. Absolutely. But then my relationship with God is that I've been being put through life lessons so that I can help someone else go through them. And because I'm on that frequency, guess what? I'm attracting other people that are on that frequency. And so we're pinging off each other and I'm giving you life lessons and yeah. you're giving me life lessons. The person that's gatekeeping, we're going to bypass that motherfucker 10 times over because he's only keeping his lessons and he's not sharing them and no one's sharing shit with him. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's about a community. If you want to go far, about, go by yourself. If you want to go all the way, go with other people. Right. So the people that really resonate with where you are and vibration wise. Right. Yeah. 
I, I ping with you guys and you guys are going to share life lessons that you've learned. And I'm going to share life lessons that I've learned. And through that, you're going to bypass me on the traumas that I don't have to go through to get those lessons. And that's important to me because I've already gone through a lot. I've lost everything. If you could teach me a lesson that I don't have to go through a trauma for, then I'm going to fucking listen because I have the maturity of doing that. And then so people that gatekeep don't understand that shit because they think that, that all they know, they're the smartest motherfucker in the room. And if you're the smartest motherfucker in the room, you're in the wrong room, right? So I'm going to put myself in positions so I can learn from every single individual because I know every individual has a different story yeah. and they have different lessons. If I could take those lessons, apply them to my life, right. then I don't have to go through as much shit as other people. And that's the thing is like when you really start going through it and you feel broken, when you fix yourself, you're like, I'll never get to that place again. I'm going to do everything I can so I never have to feel like that. I, so I don't have to wake up and think that I don't want to live this life anymore. Right. I'm a fucking take. I'm, I'm, I'm giving up, right? I don't want that feeling no more. So then if you have something valuable for me to hear, I have two ears, one mouth for a reason. I'm going to listen to you and I'm not going to talk so much, even though if I feel like I've been have more life experience than you, right? Shit. Yeah. Even though I'm old, I may be older or whatever. But if I see that you have been through something that I've never been through and I can see that shit. Bro, I'm going to listen to you. And that's the maturity of me. That's when, when I look up and I see God and what he's lessons for me. That's what I want to say. Because those people that gatekeep, they might be where they are right now. But I could guarantee I'll be a lot further than them because of how they act. Yeah. Right. I think it's that. Um, I'm not going back to who I used, who I used to be and where I used to be. Mm -hmm. I used to be broken. I used to be depressed. I used to be no life in me and no motivation to even get up or get out of bed or be around anybody mm. that I work so hard on the days that I don't want to get up because I just don't want to go back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to keep fighting every single fucking day to not be that person anymore. Mm -hmm. Because being that sad, alone, depressed dude, shit, who's around me? People that were also sad, sad. depressed and lonely. Yeah. And who can help who? You're sad in the press. I'm sad in the press. Who's gonna help who here? Mm -hmm. You can't tell me how you fixed mm -hmm. it when you don't. You never fixed it. Yeah. So that's. A, I mean, this is it's that right? Like I can't lead you into prosperity, into happiness, and love, and loving yourself when shit. I'm in this. I'm. I'm where you at? Yeah. You're not loving yourself. You're in, yeah. doing shit respectfully. You know. Yeah. yeah. So the important thing, though, I think to note is that if you know a couple motherfuckers from the gutter that have healed themselves and got to a certain place, you know the capacity of hurt they've been in. So then you understand what it took to get there, to the healed place, right? So that you understand that that person has valuable lessons to do that. But when you're in the gutter, you know that everybody has a choice and a chance when they wake up, right? You have a choice and a chance to do what you think you need to do to get to where you need to be. And if you don't do that, you're going to stay in the fucking gutter. But if I see you in the gutter and I was in there with you and I see you now thriving in life, I knew you had to do some internal shit to get to the point that you are. So now you're valuable to me. Right. And that's why that's so important to have that vibration between people, because you understand where they came from, where they're going and where they're going to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? How do you feel about people that go through a hard journey or that say they have a hard life? How do I feel about what exactly? So how do you when if I'm if I come to you and I tell you, man, I've been through this, 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 this. I don't give you an answer on my solution. Mm -hmm. How do you move on? How do you go up upon that? It depends on the, on what the issue is. I mean, if, I feel like if it's something that I went through already, I may offer you yeah. some advice, right? Because I already went through it and I don't, and I want you to get out of it. Okay. However, if it's something that neither one of us has gone through, yeah. it's, it's hard for me to have an answer or any opinion in what mm -hmm. you're going through. So, I mean, it sucks. I feel like you should go out there and try to find a solution right yeah. before complaining. However, I wouldn't know how to get out of that. Mm -hmm. So for someone that has seen you go from smiling and having nothing be behind that smile to someone that sees you smiling and now have depth in your smile and have a lot more in there. I'm always serious. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> How do you, what made you find reason into smiling and having the depth now? What made you, what, what caused you to be happy? I've said it, and I'm going to keep saying it. Uh, surrounding okay. yourself okay. with the right people, right? Yeah. And finally believing in myself. Yeah. Like believing in myself. Because yeah. other people said it. You said it. Uh, Jen has said it. Jose, you mm -hmm. have fucking said it countless times. You've been my biggest cheerleader. Mm -hmm. You've said it. Even 
you'll DM and be like, hey, mm-hmm. you're doing great. Yeah. Want to see going. more of you. Yeah. yeah. But I think it's finally believing it. Yeah. That changed my mentality completely. So I went I'll from being. A, I'll give you guys a cheat code. If you want to find out cert- someone's certain vibration. Yeah. It's going to be on the perspective they take on the traumas they experience. Because oh. everybody goes through fucking something. But if I hear somebody say, when it rains, it fucking pours. I know your perspective's fucked up. And I know that you're not seeing the silver lining in any lesson that just, that's trying to be taught to you. Right? So when I hear that, right, I'm going to smile through the adversity. I know that you have the perspective that gets you to a certain vibration that you're valuable to me. Because now I need that. I need people to speak that life into me. Because even no matter what, some point in inner journey, we're going to doubt ourselves. That's inevitable. It's going to fucking happen, right? But in that moment, I need someone that's balanced, that knows to see the silver lining and to be like, no, there's a lesson here because I don't see that sometimes, even though that I know I've been through that shit. Right. And so that's why I want to be that light for other people. And I think that if you can see a person that can be going through the absolute worst of the worst darkness in the fucking mud and then still stay clean, that's the person you want to put yourself around. There's a there's a quote that I ran into this week that I just think is just perfect, right? But it was like, I do not open my heart, my energy, and my space to everyone. I also do not need to explain why I am off limits to most people. Yeah. Fucking right, doggy. All right. Oh yeah. And <laughs> it's one of those things where it's just like before I felt like the need to explain. I need to explain to you why I've been absent. I need to explain to you why I'm I've been away for a while or while I, I just separated myself. Now it's Man, if you know who I am, you know my intention, you know my heart, you just know I need to tell away. Mm-hmm. And if I'm ready, I'll tell you. If I'm ready, I'll tell you. And if you really care, then you wouldn't judge me for taking time away. Right? But what happens when you take time away? Man, she changed. He changed. Oh, he thinks he's still good. Oh, he's not for it. But isn't that the point of life, though? Changing? Yeah. Right? right. Evolving? Exactly. I mean, you want to change. I mean... The, the, I mean, the goal is to evolve into a better version of yourself yeah. every mm. single yeah. day. One percent better is way better than just staying at the same level. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. if you don't so. change, you're wasting time. Yeah. If you yeah. don't change, you're wasting time. Whether a week, a month, a day, a year, you waste time. Mm-hmm. So if if you want to, if you're the same way you were, fucking last year or the year before, I wouldn't be or here. Six months ago. We wouldn't be here, right? Yeah. Man. I personally wouldn't be sitting here. Yeah. Like, if I was I, the same person I was a, lot, a I, year yeah. ago. I do believe mm-hmm. that. I believe it now more than ever that God will bless you in ways that you were never able to to hold before. Mm-hmm. This, what I have now, I wasn't ready for this a couple months ago. I would. I don't know what I would have done. I don't know how I would have handled it. I wanted all the glitz and glamour before, and I wanted all the prosperity of it. But I wasn't even ready to, to endure yeah. it. My heart, my mind, my soul wasn't ready for it. Yeah. Now where we're at, okay, I accept it. Whether it's a little bit, whether it's a lot of it, or whether it's just some of it, it's okay. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for it. I know what to do now. Yeah. Don't you get me wrong. What? Sometimes we mess up. Yeah. Sometimes we're not perfect. We, we're we perfectly imperfect. Yeah. I'm perfectly imperfect. My mistakes will teach me, and I will make sure that once I go through something, I will not make that same mistake twice. Mm-hmm. Because if I'm doing it again, then I'm just not learning. And why have everything when you can just lose it once again? Like, yeah. does it make no sense to me? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, it, it resonated with me. You said that, uh, that every day that we want to evolve and get better, because I don't think our parents were in a generation of that. So that I think I'm, I, and when you said that, I was like, damn, I'm really proud of this group right now because we had to make that decision because our parents were in a time that they didn't do that. They were just going through the motions of life because they wanted a certain ex- expectation of life for us, right? Yep. And so then now we're in a position that with, with the social media and how things are developing in the world that we have a chance to become that person that we, we see ourselves becoming, evolving in the ways that we do. Yeah. And that's a hard thing to be when you're the trailblazer of a path that you've never you know, gone down. Yeah. And so I think that's a generational wealth and generational curse that's broken, right? This is the lessons that we have to learn to give to our children because yeah. that's where generation wealth is. We can give them money. I'd rather give them lessons, right? Because yeah. then I can teach them to live a life that they yeah. feel fulfilled in. So is there a specific lesson that you'd give or that you want to give your children, right? Mm-hmm. One specific lesson or not even your, your children in general, just everybody listening. Right. This is, is there something this, you want to... This is your right? diary. This is your diary. The person that you were yesterday doesn't have to be the person you are tomorrow. 
And if you decide that it needs to change, have enough courage to do it. That one right there. Yeah. That one hit. That's it. And and I, I will say that if my kids are watching this 20 years from now, whatever you're going through right now, it doesn't have to be who you are. Tomorrow when you wake up in the morning, like I said earlier, you have a decision to have a choice and a chance to everything that you fucking do in this life. If you want better, go get better. Become better. Yeah. Life will get better. Yeah. Hell yeah. Check this out. React to it. Don't say a word after it. it it's just... Sit with it. And I know Genesis is going to be like, oh, shit. Sometimes you need to, you need your, sometimes you need your feelings hurt so you can wake up and realize you should be focusing on yourself. Yes. Fuck yes, dude. Because you need to be jolted out of that little fucking rhythm that you're in. And that's the, that, and that's the reason why I do cold exposure. And I tell my athletes this every, because I make all my athletes do this like four thing routine every morning because I work on the mental as much as I do physical. You need to neutralize your mind to give yourself position and intention to where you want to go in your day. If you wake up and let the, the day take you, it's going to take you to the shittiest places you can go. And I want to give my athletes a chance to make a decision that today's going to be a great day. Yeah. And that's sometimes you need to get your fucking feelings hurt yeah. to neutralize your mind to a position to get you to a place that you need to get better in. And that's I've had it so many times. And in those moments, it's so hard to deal with it because like, fuck, dude, that hurts my heart. Because I love that person yeah. or whatever they said hit me in an insecurity. But then you have to ask yourself, why am I insecure about that? So if you big brother us right now, man, it, um, I'm looking to expand my mind mm -hmm. to be happier, to be peaceful, to find a level of my life of peace. Yeah. What would you what would you recommend? Easy. What would you tell me? Break the mold. Break the mold they put you in. Mm -hmm. Whatever box they put you in, break the walls down. Because there's life outside that box. We, we grew up thinking that houses are a box. This room is a box. There's limitations to what we have as human beings, and there's not. Yeah. Whatever life you decide that you want for yourself or who you think you could be is exactly who you can be. You just have to decide to do it. And I think that's the biggest thing whenever I talk to entrepreneurs or anyone that's trying to become better in their life is that you were conditioned by your family or whoever you're with for the majority of your life to be what you are right now. Yeah. Break the fucking conditioning, break the walls down, become better because you are better. And the world allows you to be better as long as you understand you can be. And I think that's super important to understand. There's no limits to this shit, dude. They put rules on us so that we could fit in a box. That box not meant for us, dude. Well, that's the hardest part to understand. It really is. It really that's fucking hard to understand. is, dude. I mean, growing up, right? I mean, I'm pretty sure you experienced it too. We went through it. Jen went through it too, I'm mm -hmm. guessing. It's like our parents had a life that they that they work towards and they were like hey this is what we're working for mm -hmm. the goal is to go to school do this and do that and that's all we were gonna do growing up but now it's like we can be so much yeah. more yeah and it's sad that it's like they told us no this is what you're gonna do and yeah. this is the right path to take no it's like there is no right path mm -hmm. the path for you is whatever path you take yeah the conditioning was based off of fear-based thoughts yeah. And fear limiting thoughts yeah. and us failing. If if you could do what you could do in your life without any way of failing, what would you do then? Right? Because I love that that quote that says, What would you want to accomplish if your life if you couldn't fail? Right? Yeah. And if you couldn't fail doing anything, then you'd probably live the life exactly the way you'd want to. Oh, and absolutely. You would go for the things dude. that you'd fucking want to go that's through. That's crazy. I think that's that's the part of maturity. Understanding that the life that your parents went through and everything, trauma, every hardship that they had to go through is not yours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have a lot of makeup, make up for it because they treated you with them growing up and what they had to go through and mm -hmm. endure. But yo, we're so hard headed that we're gonna figure this shit out on our own. Yeah. So, and we have every opportunity to change and to be great. Mm -hmm. You are not your environment. You are not. If you grew up in in the slums or in a broken household or in a broken relationship household, why does that have to be your future? Mm -hmm. Why can't you change those habits that were in the household to have a potential family-based household that's together? Mm -hmm. Having this conversation yesterday where it's just, our families had to go through something and had to go through something very, very tough. It's, it's not a lie. It's, it, it was tough. They were broken. Mm -hmm. They're the love that they got. It's not nearly a quarter of what they give us, not even a, a glimpse. 
Maybe they got it. Maybe they didn't. There was roles that everybody had to play. Now, it's like, why can't we break that? Why can't we break that? We have every opportunity, right? All our parents want is when... It, when it hits me all the time, but the most underrated blessing is you getting out of your house and coming back home. Mm-hmm. You don't know what happens from the moment you leave your house until the moment you get back. You don't know. You may be in all 10 senses and all, and all the right intentions of that day, but someone else may have not. Mm-hmm. Maybe someone else may have not made the right decisions and now here's their life. Yep. So why are you taking it for granted? Why are you why are you mad at, at your significant other? Why are you going why are you going to sleep mad? Or why are you having a conversation that's mad? Why don't you just fix the problem? Mm-hmm. Is the problem that big that you can't have a conversation and mature enough to fix it? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. If you left your mom's or your parents' house mad or left because you were mad, why can't you fix it? Mm-hmm. Simple word can fix it. I'm sorry. That's it. Even I'm if sorry. you don't mean it. Yeah. Right? Even if you don't mean it. Uh I've done it before. I've been upset with them. Right. Yeah. But like you said, it, it's like you don't know if you're coming back. You don't know if you're going to see them again. So the last thing yeah. you want is to like, let's say I were to pass away. I got into a fight with my mom. Yeah. Right. right? And I don't apologize to her. I, I make it OK with her, even if I don't mean it. Like what happens if like I die? Right. Yeah. It's like she's going to be living with that for the rest of my life. Like, hey, we were mad at each other. Mm-hmm. We were not OK. And what happens? Oh, man, I should have. Man, I should have. But the should have don't. Exactly. The they you should have. You should have. Should have what? Just do why, it. Why didn't you? Didn't Didn't you just talk to him? Didn't you have every opportunity? Yeah. Doesn't the phone work both ways every single fucking time? Mm-hmm. So, at, I mean, I'm I'm very I'm an extremist, bro. But I like I've said it too. Like the day my time comes and I'm called back, a hundred years from now, at home, man, I know the math they math. Then. I'm like, bro. But a hundred years from now, I'm like, damn. There's There's a guest list on that. There is a certain list that is able to go. And it's her requirements. If we have not talked in the last three months, six months, can't come. Because that was not important enough for you to even reach out or for me to reach out to you. Mm-hmm. So whether it's it's going to be a small venue because I know exactly the amount of people. I'd be there, but I'm like six years you, older than you. So, like, I'm not going to be there, yeah. my boy. <laughs> I'm Matthew Matthew. I'm Matthew Matthew. won't be there. It's sorry. Just, it's just that. Like, I don't, I've told my mom, too. Like, I don't want nobody at my funeral. To be there and be like, man, yeah, you, I used to. Yeah, nah, man, nah, nah. <laughs> you, you live my life with you. I'm not talking about elementary and younger because, mm-hmm. man, that wasn't. That's a whole other version of me. Yeah, this version of me of enjoying life and and living the way we're living. Those people, the ones that are there when I didn't have nothing, and the ones where I was struggling. Yeah. If you weren't during those times, hey, just you can post it on IG. You do whatever you want out of there. Mm-hmm. Other than that, bro, it's okay. Everybody got me, mm-hmm. and I'm fulfilled. Everybody that I have in my life is the ones I need. Mm-hmm. Point blank, point period. I don't need nobody more. I need nobody less. Mm-hmm. I have what I have. I'm happy with it. Don't change it. And if it, whatever, if it were to change at any single point, it's because I just know the man up above just wanted to change. Exactly. I can't control it. Mm-hmm. I, need, I need to understand. Yeah. As much as sometimes we don't want to understand, I, I'll, I'll understand. Yeah. It's okay. You know what I mean? So... Have you guys ever heard the story about the three monkeys, about the uh, the study that they did with the monkeys and the bananas? No. All right, let me tell you a dope-ass story about conditioning then. All right? So they did a study on three monkeys, and they put them in a little, little aquarium thing, and they put a bunch of bananas at the top of the fucking tree. They put a rope that connected to the bananas that the, the monkeys can climb up and grab the bananas. Every, when they first started this, this research study... The, but the monkeys would try to climb the rope and try to grab the bananas. Every time they try to go grab the bananas, the research study would shoot them with a, with with like the fire hose of like a firefighter, right? So it would knock the monkey off the off the rope. Every time they do it, they'd shoot him with the hose, knock him off. Eventually, the monkeys stopped climbing the rope. They started interchanging the monkeys one by one, and every time a new monkey would come up, the monkey the new monkey would try to climb the rope to go get the bananas. They didn't shoot him with the water. The monkeys pulled it down and beat the shit out of the monkey. After a while, there was no more original monkeys that were in that fucking aquarium that got shot with the water. But for whatever reason, every time that monkey jumped on that rope, they took him down and beat the shit out of him. That's how powerful conditioning is. That we were doing things that we don't even realize why we're doing them because we were taught from other people. That's what you do. Oh, shit. Oh, powerful right 
the conditioning of I mean that I mean that goes into like that goes like to everything right like of uh, self worth. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you what you're worth. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you what you deserve. I'm going to tell you what this is all you can have. Exactly. And because you're so conditioned, yeah. because they keep telling you, reminding you, yeah. and you start stepping out just a little bit more of like, nah, you know what? Maybe I can have, no, no, what the hell? Come back over it's here. It's like, yeah. maybe I deserve a little bit more. It's like, and then someone, nah, nah, and then nah, someone, nah, nah, someone nah, pulls nah, you, no, bro. no, you don't. Yep. Or life just hits you in the way of like, or oh, you're about to have that. No, no, I'm going to take it away. Yeah. But again, conditioning, you think, oh, you don't deserve this, but at the same time, it's that power above testing you. Like, wait, you want that? Well, here's a test. Overcome it. <gasps> how much, to, how bad do you want, really it? want it? Do you mm-hmm. want to go and get it? Well, let me give you something. So you got to get tested just a little bit. Yeah. And if you reach it, then it's for you. Dude, perfect. I have a quote. I want to get in my phone because I don't want to mess it up. Let's do right, it. Right when you said that shit is perfect, right? All right, here we go. And that this completely correlates with what you're saying. Or should let me find this shit. Where the hell? I just found that shit. All right. When you pray, always remember when you make those calls, there is two people listening on the other line. The devil hears your prayers, which is why he always throws adversity at the people with the highest calling. Right? Oh, man. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That perfectly aligns with what you're saying. Yeah. That he hears wow. he hears all prayers. He's on the call as well. Yeah. And then if, if he knows thought about it that way. If he knows that you're praying to God, he knows that he has to step in the way. Yeah. And he make he has to make sure he gives you adversity and speed bumps along the way. Because that's the only power he has. God is God has the power to, to bless you with that. The devil has the power to stop you from it's it. Because if you think about it too, it's just like you want the glitz and glamour, like I'm gonna give it to you. Mm-hmm. But there's so much shit that comes with it, right? Mm-hmm. There's, I mean, we've had it, we've gone through it, where it's like, yeah, I wanted the, I want the residuals right away. I want it now. Mm-hmm. And then you get it now, and then you end up being, like, on camera, have everything, and then when you get home, you're the most saddest, depressing motherfucker ever. Mm-hmm. And, but no one sees it, but you do. And now no one knows that you're fighting a battle within yourself to even just wake up and get out of bed. But no one knows it because they expect you mm-hmm. to be this person. So now, she, why am I happy? Man, because I work for it. Yeah, I literally day by day by day, mile for mile, I had to work. I had to grind it, and I'm here. Mm-hmm. Why does it mean so much to me to protect my peace? Because I had to earn it, mm-hmm. and I had to get it. Mm-hmm. And if if I didn't go this way, man, I don't know. I don't mm-hmm. know where this would have gone. You know. Yeah. So taking me a while. It's, it's just it's something about having a room with the right energy that mm-hmm. fulfills everything. Yep. Right. Um, again, sitting down with both of you guys at the same time has been something that I didn't know was needed. Mm-hmm. But now that we're now that we have done this, yep. man, this shit was great. Yeah, this shit was amazing. Yeah, it's a back and forth, it's an energy, and and again, it's one of those things where we leave here, and we really have this relationship. We really mm-hmm. have this conversations. We really have these, and like I've always I've always said it too. Like I wish when we get on phone calls, we can record them yeah. and we can have that as a as like a podcast era because again we don't worry about cameras we don't worry about nobody knowing anything we just vulnerable vulnerable back Mm -hmm. and forth growth i want to ask you something now that before we get into the quotes are you happy where you're sitting right now that's weird that you asked me that question (laughs) i literally thought about that in the shower this morning i'm not even playing (laughs) i was like would he ask me that question and so I wanted to think about that because I, th- I think it needs a very thought out question or thought out answer for that. Mm. And my answer is, I don't think we're here to be happy. I think we're here to have an experience. And part of that experience is I have to be sad as much as I need to appreciate the happiness. So is, if, I, if I can equally be sad in the moments and understand the perspective it takes to know that that's the gauge on how to know what it is to be happy, then I'm okay with that. And if I'm sad, I know that that cloud only stands over my my house for a very small time because that will pass and I will be happy again. And that's part of life. I can't expect to be happy all the time. I can't expect things to go right all the time, but I can control my perspective. I can control the way my mind thinks and I can go take that first step towards the direction that I want to be. And I know that I'm going to be going in the same in the, right, in the direction that I want to be going, be going, right? And I think that's my answer because I think too many people focus on trying to be happy, 
trying to to f- chase this dream that's not obtainable. That's like saying I want to be perfect. I can't be perfect. God didn't make me that way. If he did, then I would be God, right? But because I know that this life isn't meant for me only to be happy, it's it's here for me to li- have a real experience of sadness, happiness, having real emotions as a human being because I see us after this lifetime not having those things. And we might have had that decision to come to this life so we could have the full experience on what it means to be a human being. So now I indulge in the sadness because I know that makes makes me know that I'm alive. My heart is beating. If I'm sad, if I'm crying, that means I know that I'm living. I have a breath that goes in my body and comes out of my body that knows that I have the choice to be happy, sad, whatever. And I think that that for me is fulfilling. And that for me is what I want my life to be. I don't only want to be happy. I want to I want to live this experience to the fullest extent. <laughs> hey. Damn. Hell yeah. How do you follow that up? Follow I mean, yes. <laughs> don't ask is, us. That was not even the quote. <laughs> I know. That wasn't a question. That was not the I'm question. I'm telling you, bro. I had that question in my head when I took a shower this morning. I said, no, this motherfucker's going to ask me if I'm happy or not today. What would it I was, say to was, that? One or two really questions, right? Wait, was one or two questions. Yeah. Are you happy today? <laughs> or, 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 or what would you tell your 10 year old self? <laughs> Oh, bro, that's exactly oh, what it is. We would use that. We would use that. So we can't redo really it. Okay, we can't redo really it. He's like, delete oh, that. Bro, delete that part. Ah, shit. Oh, All right, fuck. so give us your quote. There you go. All right, <laughs> you <laughs> might as well. You're on the road. I gave you my my other quote because it was it was uh, correlating what we were talking about. Right. But my second quote is: When you lose your money, you lose nothing. When you lose your health, you lose something. When you lose your character, you lose everything. We're done. All right. Just end it at that. I don't even want to say oh, my quote oh, no oh, <laughs> Baby violin. Oh, shit. <laughs> Man, if that doesn't... Oh, my God. That, I don't even want to do it. I don't even want to say <laughs> it. Like, I thought it was a good one, but... <laughs> <laughs> Bebe, go ahead. Oh, my boy, you say it. <laughs> yeah, you gonna Are you going to end, end it? That's how you go going to You're going to end it then. All right, cool. All right, so the one that I have that, again, it correlates with everything we're talking about. Maturity is when you don't force people to choose you. Mm, yeah. A hundred percent. Plain and simple. Yeah. yeah. Understanding that. Coming to terms with, okay, I'm not for that person and it's okay. Mm-hmm. I'm for me though. Making sure your boat is, is cool and it's it's afloat. A hundred percent, bro. Are we we the same mind either. Are we yeah. <laughs> He's like, Damn, I didn't want to go right last, bro. <laughs> well, I should have said it first. Damn, yeah, I messed up. Yeah. And it reads like this. Ah, oh, uh, I didn't want to that mess this dope, one up. That I was dope. Not. I like that. That was like <laughs> I would reads, steal that shit. <laughs> and it reads like this. Whatever you feed will grow. Faith or fear, warrior confidence, doubt or belief. It's your choice what grows. That's a good one. What were yeah. you scared about? That's a good one. That was a good one. And with that, that's <laughs> a wrap. Intention and attention are the two things. Man, Jose, you coming in to, to yeah, take, take the shots? Come, Come on, go. bro. To an amazing podcast, man. This amazing was podcast. for the books, bro. So if you haven't, I mean, right here, we're waiting for Jose to get his things together. <laughs> Make sure you're subscribed and like. Yeah. <laughs> like, subscribe, share, follow us on all our socials. And new clothing's coming out? New yeah. clothing's coming out? Whoa. Bangers, bro. Oh. Fucking bangers. Oh. No, they <laughs> Delete that part. They don't know yeah. yet. Uh, <laughs> no, you're good right there. Right there, right there. I have mine there. Sheesh. Brothers, it's us alive. Another amazing podcast, mm-hmm. another amazing conversations, and I hope it helps whoever listens to it and is ready to Listen to the message, man. Exactly. Love you guys, bro. Love you guys. Hey, tell us the life. Yes, yes sorry. Every time. Let's go. It's not that bad. It's really it's not, not bad at all. It's not that bad. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, he went all the way. <laughs>